Great. Well, uh, hi, everyone. I am Katie from Hackster. Uh, welcome to the Microchip MPU Solutions for Quick Prototypes to Full Production webinar. We've got Brian Hahn with us today from Microchip to talk about the SAM A5D27 Wireless SOM eval kit and other microchip solutions that will help you speed up the development of your projects. Uh, so just a little bit about our speaker today. Brian is a product man marketing manager for Microchip Technologies 32-bit microprocessor business unit. He's been with Microchip for more than 11 years and brings with him more than 25 years of experience in the semiconductor industry. Uh, so his previous uh, product marketing background includes flash memory, microcontrollers, and MOSFETs. And he holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Electrical Engineering from Rose Holman Institute of Technology. Uh, we've also got Neil Rice here with us today, the Senior Manager for Microprocessors at Microchip. He will be helping answer questions. You'll see him popping in and out uh, in the Q&A. Um, and then, so just a little bit about what today will entail. The first part of today's webinar will include a presentation, and then we'll have about 10 minutes for Q&A at the end. So if you do have questions, there is a Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. You can click that, type your question in there, and uh, we'll get to as many of those as possible before the end of the webinar. And then as an added bonus, um, Microchip is giving away a SAM A5D27 wireless SOM eval kit to three webinar participants. Um, so anyone who attends this event live with us today uh, will get their name in the drawing for that. And we will contact those winners next week with more information on how to claim that prize. Uh, so thanks again for joining us. And I'm going to let Brian take it from here. Awesome. Thank you, Katie. Um, hi, everyone. Well, good morning, good evening, or Good afternoon, depending on where, where you're attending from, I guess. Um, so I'm gonna share with you a little bit about our microchips MPU solutions, um, in particular, our system on module products. So microchip, if you're not familiar, is a, I mean, been around for a long time. Most of their business has been 8-bit, um, 16-bit, 32-bit microcontroller products, which you're probably most familiar with. Um, we also have a, a wide range of analog and uh, interface products, among other things, and lots of things that go on your uh, uh, on your board. So the idea behind the, the microprocessor solutions is to if I get to do it on the right screen um, is to try and make it as easy as possible for a lot of our microcontroller based I mean, customers to design in a microprocessor. So we're trying to make it as easy as possible and make those look as much like a microcontroller. Uh, as possible to so you can get your designs into production in a in a fraction of the time that it would normally take for a microprocessor um, based uh, uh, based solution. So we first um, started started uh, simplifying this pr the process by integrating the DRAM inside the microprocessor uh, the microprocessor package. I mean a significant portion of the support requests over the years has for microprocessor based designs has been in the in the DRAM routing. So we're trying to remove some of that uh, some of that uh, perhaps difficult uh, process uh, from uh, from customers and doing so, um, it enables a PCB design with fewer layers, which lower, ultimately lowers your system related costs, also simplify, simplifies the PCB dramatically, reduces your EMI risks. Um, and then uh, uh, pretty important right now is it re removes a lot of the DRAM obsolescence issues, price fluctuations, uh, availability issues uh, moving forward. So you don't have to, uh, to worry about any of that. And then these are all industrial temp, um, long-term support, um, part of microchips, um, long-term support uh, practice. And then we spun those products uh, onto a system one module. So MPU system one modules are not, are not new to the industry. There's lots of vendors that are providing system one modules um, that include all the power management, the memory and everything you need for a micro, or excuse me, a microprocessor based system. But uh, Microchip is the only silicon vendor to actually offer those, and that can offer some unique uh, advantages in the industry for designing with one of our MPU SOMs. Um, number one is most of the, all of the main active components on that uh, on that module come from Microchip, um, and then just uh, general uh, generally speaking, with a SOM, and it speeds up the PCB design. Um, and accelerates your time to market. So you can bring a product into, into the market much, uh, much sooner than you normally would by developing a, a microprocessor-based system um, in, with, the, with discrete components. And again, these are also industrial temp 
and part of microchip's long-term support policy. And then because um, they are microchip, it's a microchip design, microchip components, we also offer the open source reference designs with full design support from, from microchip. And that design support includes um, free online schematic design review services. And this is open to everyone, not just, not just large customers. Um, you can go to our support ticket uh, system online, submit your schematic, and our team will, will take a look at it, take a look at the design and review that and make sure and provide you feedback um, to, to ensure that your design is going to operate as you intend. Um, and then we also, again, all of our products are designed for long life support with no hardware obsolescence of the, the microprocessor or the system on module or the system and package, whichever way you go, um, as well as long-term support for the software. And that is in terms of both Linux support and uh, Harmony support for bare metal or RTOS-based uh, um, based designs. So a couple of the, the Psalms, the, the first two Psalms that we have available, actually the Psalms that we have available today are all based on the SAM A5 D27. Um, so the couple of them, one of them is a wired Psalm. This was the initial Psalm that we introduced. It's been, in, been around for a couple of years. It's based on the SAM A5 D2 system and package with one gigabit of DDR2 integrated. Um, has a 64 meg quad spy flash on board as well as the power management on board um, and an E squared for uh, the MAC address for um, for the microchip phi that's actually on board as well. So the one sitting beside that is a is a wired version of that SOM, and I have a few more details on that, a larger picture. You can see what that is on this next slide. So the basis of our wireless um, SOM is again the SAM A5 D2, so Cortex A5 500 megahertz processor with two gigabits of LPDDR2 memory integrated into the chip. Then and what's, what makes this wireless is a Wi-Fi BLE module also from microchip. The nice thing about this is the Wi-Fi module, the, the BLE, Wi-Fi BLE module that we put on board is pre-certified. So all of those pre-regulatory pre certifications that apply to that, um, that Wi-Fi BLE module now also apply to your, um, to your end design with this product. So it dramatically lowers the bar for um, RF regulatory certifications for your end product. It also includes a microchip um, optimized power management IC for our microprocessors, uh, 10100 fly on board. So this is actually both a wired and a wireless um, wireless board. So lots of options with this board, which is why this is the one that we're um, offering the eval kit for uh, um, as a prize for attending today's webinar. So there's also a 64 meg quad spy flash on board for some local uh, non-volatile data storage as well as um, an optional boot source for, uh, for the project. Uh, secure IC on board, also a microchip product. Um, that is a good place for, for storing secure um, for keys for various access to various cloud, uh, 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 cloud vendors. Oops, missed the slide there, but... Uh, so a few more details on the features of the wireless, the, uh, the wireless SOM. Again, it's a Cortex A5 based uh, MPU with floating point and neon uh, available on the device. These are good for audio or image manipulation or image processing uh, on the device, as well as um, for help on the, on the graphics side for, for rendering, rendering graphics. 128K of cache to help speed up the or, uh, execution of the application. Um, again, this one has two gigabits of LPDDR2 integrated into, into the processor. Um, uh, one thing to note on, on these is there is no non-volatile storage on board for the actual OS. And we do that because we have we provide some flexible boot options. So you'd put this single-sided solderable PCB down onto your carrier board alongside either NAND flash, a large quad spy flash, or more, more commonly SD or EMMC memory. So we can we have the ability to boot from any of those uh, any of those sources. User interface wise, the um, the processor has a 24-bit RGB LCD interface um, supporting up to uh, 1024, 768, or XGA um, type of resolution on the display. There's also a 12-bit parallel camera interface uh, on board, as well as a digital audio subsystem supporting 
um, a couple of I2S digital audio ports, as well as they have, there's an integrated class D amplifier. So uh, what this does is allows you to, I mean, if you have some sort of audio feedback that, or, that you wanna provide as part of your part of your end design, you can do five to 10 watts of uh, audio directly to, I mean, with a minimal, um, uh, minimal components on the outside of the device directly to, uh, uh, to feed the speakers. Connectivity wise, again, 10100 ethernet as a PHY on board, um, three high-speed USB ports, two CAN ports, lots of serial ports. Um, so five flex comms, these are flexibly configurable serial ports. So you can configure those as essentially any type of serial port that, uh, that you need to implement in your design, as well as five dedicated UARTs available on the device. And then we also bring out 94 um, of the available GPIO um, uh, to the outside of the board and give you access to, to whatever else you want to connect this, um, connect this up to. And then there's fully integrated security. So we basically get that for, for free on the device that supports that the court, our same A5D2 supports hardware crypto, um, hardware crypto with on the fly encryption, decryption from all offboard memories, secure boot, um, secure boot capabilities, uh, ARM trust zone based. So you can actually run um, secure processes essentially behind, uh, behind a firewall uh, on the device, as well as hardware anti-tamper, RSA and ECC for, um, um, uh, for a key exchange with, uh, for uh, cloud access, as well as uh, secure key storage available on the device. And then, I mean, using our SOM, we provide uh, the guy, the, the idea there is to provide an easy migration path to, uh, to volume production. So this is, I'll get into more details on this board later, but this is our wireless SOM evaluation kit, the one that uh, you could win here today. But you see the middle of this board, um, the SOM sits directly in the middle of that board, <clears throat> excuse me, so allows you, so allows you to just take this single side or soldable PCB and put that down onto your carrier board. Some of the other components on this board are basically all just the, the interface boards. I'll talk more about that later. But the idea there is that we can provide, we provide the complete open source reference designs for the wireless SOM, as well as the evaluation boards. And those are all available publicly on uh, microchip.com for the individual design files for the SOMs. You may have to, um, Provide it. You have to provide an email address and actually register, and you'll get an email with a link to download those. But the the uh, reference designs for the evaluation boards are available directly on the product page on microchip.com. So we're trying to make it as easy as possible um, for you to uh, acquire those uh, those boards. So we have a full uh, kind of flexible upgrade path. So you have the wireless SOMs, or the, excuse me, the SOMs for a very quick proof of concept for prototypes, you can use that all the way up through low volume production. Um, if you get something into production and you want to, uh, excuse me, and you want to cost reduce that design, we have a very easy cost reduction path down to integrating the, the, the system and using our design, putting that, building that directly onto your board and you still get the advantage of the system and package and a four layer PCB implementation. So uh, you don't have to, uh, go to an eight, 10 layer board or more um, just because you're interface to uh, high-speed external memory or uh, other high-speed interfaces on the board. Uh, so you don't have, to, don't have to do all that. And then if it really takes off, I mean, you can go all the way down to a complete discrete solution, all with the support of microchip. So we have, and we also have, again, today they're Cortex-A5, 500 megahertz based processors, but we're committed to um, continuing to provide, provide both SIPs um, system and package this with the integrated DRAM, as well as SOMs for um, uh, for introduction on, as well on our next generation higher performing processors as well. So I mean, for for new products, we will also have uh, SIPs and SOMs available for those um, uh, in the future. So where are we designed in today? I mean, kind of uh, all across the board, a lot of uh, smart grid, solar gateway types of applications, smart thermostat, um, home automation hub, security, um, security systems, um, HMI for white goods, power distribution units. We've had a lot of uh, success in payment terminals just because of the, on I mean, a lot of because of the onboard security available on our processors, 
Pullman building gateways, uh, industrial HMI, navigation devices, high-end sound box devices, automotive telematics. So it's one of the, the common themes here is, is communications, um, some HMI um, are capable on, on our device. I mean, none of these, were, uh, a lot of these don't require high, 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 high performance. If you're just doing communications and some uh, HMI, this is a great, uh, a great solution to uh, start your next, uh, your next project. So on the software side, uh, mainline Linux support out of the box on, on our SOMs, all of our processors. Uh, it's developed and maintained by Microchip. Um, we'll talk about the importance of that on the next couple of slides. Uh, LTS Linux support for full lifecycle of the MPU. Um, so this means you design in a design in a product based uh, based on one of our solutions today. Five, ten years down the road, you want to update that to um, to the to take advantage of the latest. Um, the latest Linux, you're able to do that because we do we update the LTS Linux support for all of our um, MPU platforms for the life cycle of that device. And as I mentioned before, we don't obsolete microprocessors. So that's essentially the however long you want to use it, you'll have uh, you'll have Linux support. And we also do the same on the bare metal and RTOS side. The, our processors are supported alongside our microcontrollers within um, within the MP Lab X and MP Lab Harmony um, uh, development tool chain, so it makes it very easy for uh, for you and the rest of our clients to integrate. I mean, if you go from microcontroller based design to microprocessor based design using a single a single tool chain, and on the GUI development side, we have free open or free um, GUI development frameworks for both Linux uh, and for uh, bare metal and RTOS based designs. Linux is on the Ensemble Graphics Toolkit, which I'll be dig into more details uh, in, in a minute or so, and I'll show you a video, just some of the highlights of that. And then on the bare metal RTOS side, we have MPLab Harmony Graphics Suite. So the importance of, I mean, mainline Linux. Um, so the, the idea behind mainline Linux, it is, it is the top level Linux kernel where all of the more, all of the, um, Basically, everything's been fully vetted by the community. Um, so you're going to be able to start your design on, based on a solid and proven code base that's been vetted by thousands and thousands of, of engineers out in the field. Um, also, this is where all of the newest features and the bug fixes, and more importantly, the security patches have been, uh, have been discovered, implemented, and again, all fully vetted by the community. But really, I mean, if you start your system based on a... Um, uh, based on a mainline, they typically just run out of the box. I mean, you really don't have to make a whole lot of changes to it um, to get anything to run if because everything's been vetted. You, you should, if it's a mainline driver and it's working with our mainline mainline Linux, it's just going to it's just going to run. It's it's can save you a tremendous amount of time in your software integration. And the fact that Linux is scalable, so I mean, it allows you to create your application code and and move that to. Uh, either higher performing or lower performing microprocessor um, to take advantage of either lower, perform or, uh, lower power consumption or um, improving performance. I mean, but it all operates basically uh, basically the same. And then we also offer the, again, the LTS support, so true long life support for mainline, uh, mainline Linux. So if you base your code on a mainline Linux that is actually maintained and updated, um, you'll always be able to take advantage of the latest um, the latest components, the latest uh, security updates um, that happen to the uh, uh, to the mainline Linux. So, I mean, in the end, I mean, using a mainline Linux solution can save up to twelve months uh, of development time. So, and Microchip has more than twenty years of uh, of experience. Actually, goes back to the Atmel days. I mean, Atmel was acquired by Microchip in two thousand sixteen, but prior to that, I mean, Atmel had been mainlining the Linux support for microprocessors all the way back to 2004. Um, as much so that there's an in-house maintainer, uh, which is important, that is a, a vested interest in making sure that um, our, our Linux updates and everything gets fed back into, into the main line and everything keeps is, is updated throughout the lifetime of, uh, of our products. Um, 
I also mentioned we target the long-term support releases, but twice a year is an LTS release for, uh, for the mainline Linux. And again, we do this for all of our microchip uh, MPU platforms. Um, the distributions that we support are the most common for um, embedded Linux platforms, that being Yocto, um, Buildroot, and OpenWRT. And then we also have driver support for other microchip uh, supporting or companion ICs, whether analog components, uh, power management, or power components, uh, and various uh, interface uh, and wireless devices uh, uh, as well. Uh, so we have, again, in that period of time, we've over 200 million devices shipped uh, have all been under the uh, uh, mainline Linux. So to give you a little bit of an example um, of the, the advantage of doing that, so we had a, a client a while back that had selected a microprocessor based on a, uh, based slowly, solely on price. Um, it did not have a, it did not have a mainline Linux um, solution at the time. So as a result, in order to bring that design up to the latest standards and support um, the latest security updates and drivers, it took them six, took that client six months to port um, that solution to the latest Linux kernel. Um, but more importantly, what that means is now, since they did all that work, they, need, they now needed to maintain that Linux distribution for the lifetime of this product and any other subsequent devices or products that they have based on that uh, solution that use that same software, that use that same Linux solution. So, and but in the end, that low cost processor ended up not meeting the performance expectations. So that mean they had to go through that process all again. So Microchip was able to step in and help them redesign with one of our processors that was already based on the mainline Linux. Um, and they were able to get uh, get a solution up up and running uh, in, a, in a shorter amount of time. But the end result, I mean, is that client ended up using, ended up losing about a year's worth of revenue um, just because they selected that low cost uh, microprocessor with a non-mainline Linux solution. Or even if that solution at the time was introduced, was introduced with a mainline, um, may have been introduced at the time with a mainline Linux solution, but it was not maintained. So it's kind of stuck in a, in a, in a particular period of time. You still have to go back and update that to, um, to take advantage of the latest uh, security patches and everything. So just remember that, I mean, the true cost of ownership of that uh, solution is uh, oftentimes a lot more significant than just the pure component cost uh, of those solutions. Hopefully that uh, that makes sense. Um, you understand uh, the importance of mainline Linux um, and our, our dedication to uh, to continue to provide that. So another one of the things that we're doing to make things a little easier is the free GUI development. So Ensemble Graphics Toolkit is a free open source Linux graphics toolkit that's been optimized for microchip MPUs. Um, and again, it's part of our mainline Linux distribution as well. Um, and then we also have uh, MPLab Harmony Graphics Suite for, um, for bare metal and RTOS-based GUI design. So it's, Harmony Graphics is very tightly integrated into the MPLab ecosystem. Um, and again, it supports all of our 32-bit microcontrollers as well as our microprocessors, including the, the SIPs and SOMs. It's all part of the same, uh, part of the same solution. Um, to find more information on, on I, both of those solutions at microchip.com uh, forward slash graphics. So a little bit more on Ensemble Graphics um, before I get into, uh, uh, I'll show you a video that shows some of the capabilities and some of the features uh, of, uh, of, the, of the tool. But it is a free and open source solution, totally free to use for development and in production um, based under the Apache 2 license uh, agreement. And then it also runs, again, runs more aptly on lower performing, lower power um, microprocessor because it operates in as little as 64 megabytes of RAM and 32 megabytes of flash. Um, a lot of the popular third-party toolkits out there that are not necessarily free to use um, often require more than double that amount just to, uh, uh, just to run. It's also capable of being set up for a very fast boot. We actually have a demo um, that uh, a demo that actually boots up to a 
graphical screen similar to the one that's shown here on the right um, in, a, in as little as two and a half seconds from a cold, um, from a cold boot. Uh, again, it's been optimized for microchip MPUs. Uh, again, a lot of the, the third-party tools that are out there are based off of or based on um, re requiring a dedicated uh, hardware uh, graphic processing unit, which our processors do not have. Um, in some of those cases where that the, the hardware GPU is not available, it will resort to generating some of that in uh, in, in software can have a dramatic impact impact on the performance of the solution. So. Um, EGT has been optimized to provide the best, the absolute best performance on our microprocessors. Uh, as far as the uh, development interface, I mean, if you're familiar with some of the other tools, um, it would you, this would be very familiar to this because it has a very similar uh, API um, as some of the other tools. That uh, so the learning curve should not be uh, should not be significant. And it's already, again, as I mentioned before, it's already been integrated into microchips, um, Linux for some mainline Linux for SAM distributions. So, I mean, the result here is you'd be able to provide some higher performing graphics with a lot lower bomb cost due to the lower memory footprint um, and on a much lower power uh, microprocessor and get very similar, um, a similar type of graphical performance. So now I wanted to show you, rather than showing you a bunch of screens of uh, some of the examples that we can do, I wanted to show um, just a short, so bear with me here, it's a four minute video. Um, the EGT the Launcher is a graphical Linux application written using Ensemble Graphics Toolkit, also known as EGT. EGT is a full featured graphical application development toolkit written in C++ for embedded Linux applications developed by Microchip, optimized to be lightweight, low power, and capable of booting very quickly. This example application demonstrates the many features and possibilities for the creation of graphical applications using Microchip's low power MPU products. After being launched, the application loads several XML files to create the home screen menu. This menu has a variety of EGT examples for the user to swipe through and choose. Each of these examples showcases the various features and components that EGT supports. It also has examples that show how EGT can be integrated with third-party libraries to create modern applications. One of the main features of EGT is the rich, extensible, and customizable widget set. This widget example shows the available EGT widgets and their different states. Widgets also act as control elements that allow user interaction to handle events such as touch on the screen, a click of a button, or the pressing of a key. EGT also provides support for various fonts and colors. It provides customizable themes with which the user can create a unique look for their application. In addition to fonts, EGT also supports various languages and characters like emojis. This is done using UTF-8 encoding. This example uses the mature and well-established GNU G-Text framework for internationalization support. Normally, an application developer will have to write several lines of code to animate objects. EGT allows you to easily animate widgets and assets using easing functions so that the application does not have to. Designers can also write their own easing functions to create cool and unique animations. The gauge example shows animation of SVG images. Using the hardware planes feature of our MPUs, this example creates a static background image of a gauge in the base overlay and an image of a needle in a different overlay. Only the needle is animated using easing functions, reducing the CPU workload. The dashboard example shows a full-blown vehicle instrument cluster that can be created using the gauge class. In addition to the basic animation functions, EGT also supports higher order classes such as Sprite that provides a way to animate Sprite sheets. EGT makes use of hardware acceleration of the LCD controller to animate Sprite sheets. This example shows how Sprite animations are done seamlessly and with minimum power consumption. EGT provides support for most standard image formats like BMP, PNG, JPEG, and SVG. Audio and video playback at up to 30 frames per second is possible with or without an available hardware video decoder. 
The EGT library can also be used along with third-party libraries to create modern-day interactive high-end applications. For example, this 2D physics demo integrates the EGT library with Box2D. Box2D is a two-dimensional physics simulator library. Many such examples are available in the GitHub repository EGT Samples. Please see the README page for instructions to compile and run these examples. The thermostat application is a practical example that is written using EGT. You can easily interface with any external sensor using a library called LibSensors. For more information, links to repositories, programmer's manual, and other training videos, please visit our EGT Design Center at microchip.com slash EGT. Thanks for watching. All right. Thank you for that. Um, hopefully that link works because I actually tried that this morning and it didn't. So if it didn't work, if it didn't work, you can go through the microchip.com forward slash um, forward slash graphics. I know we've been making some changes to our uh, to our web website and some uh, things get broken uh, when that happens. So I wanted to run through some. Uh, I guess some, some example block diagrams just to show you some of the capabilities um, within the device and um, to show you where where it could be used, perhaps give you some ideas. So, I mean, this is just this is just this is an overview of the um, the various components that are part of the actual wireless SOM itself. So we can see all of the 94 I/O available. Um, you can see some of the details of what some of those. Uh, IO, R, UARTs, and the flex comms and camera interface, and see where all those uh, see where all those go. But and this is the the two gigabit uh, LPDDR2 inside the microprocessor ECC608 um, secure authentication IC. This is the microchip PMIC. This is all on board uh, the wireless SOM. Um, so you can see, and then there's also this this PMIC also has some um, has two LDOs uh, on board as well, so you can use those to put to supply power to other external components on <clears throat> excuse me on the board. So more specifically, I mean again a lot of gateway types of applications: IoT router, edge edge device for industrial medical security, home automation um, sensors. They have the wireless SOM here that has the processor DRAM PMIC. Wi-Fi BLE 10100 on board um, with connection to other wireless sensors. <clears throat> excuse me, to, I mean, wired, to a wired network if you want to have it connected into the backbone of the network. Um, then also local sensors through the, uh, the, the GPIO and uh, everything that's available on, on, on the device. And then put this down onto a board next to EMMC or SD card or um, RON and flash uh, on your board. Uh, and then also important to note that the the same A5D2, the wireless SOM, actually, the, the A5D2 is a qualified AWS Greengrass and Azure IoT Edge um, platform. So it's, it's already yeah, been uh, uh, been vetted for uh, for those uh, for those uh, cloud-based applications. Um, 2D imaging applications. We have a lot of history with and, and 2D uh, barcode scanning, also image recognition, occupancy sensing type of uh, type of solutions. Again. The while the while will sum here in the center um, connections to other wireless uh, wireless connectivity wireless sensors and whatnot um, the, the parallel camera interface um, and again down next to EMMC or SD card or DRAM on on the device and then audio applications again I mentioned there's the audio subsystem um, you know you're not going to be it will require a little bit more um, audio processing on the outside for higher fidelity types of uh, audio applications but for um, uh, for simpler audio feedback um, you can do a lot of that uh, inside the uh, inside the device and then uh, home security automation again this looks very similar to the gateway type of application but then we also have um, a, a display tied to this that uh, and then microchip has a, a whole line of uh, touch touchscreen controllers uh, as well that uh, work uh, pretty seamlessly with our microprocessor products and again that includes the wireless SOMs and this this the SIP uh, SIP products uh, as well. So all of this information, how do you get started? Again, the the first best place to start is purchase one of the one of our eval boards. Um, 
the wireless SOM in this case, again, the orderable part number is right here. Um, uh, Avnet should have stock uh, on these, I believe. But was, again, you saw this slide earlier, but here's the wireless SOM in the middle, 500 megahertz, Cortex-A5, Wi-Fi, BOE, PMIC uh, on board, the 10 monitor or Fi. Um, and then everything else around it is basically just connectivity. So these micro-E uh, click bus interfaces, these are available on most of our um, current uh, eval platforms, SD card slot, um, some uh, USB connectivity, um, the ISC, the parallel camera interface, uh, the parallel RGB LCD interface, 1100 Ethernet directly on the board. And then all of our platforms also, again, through this RGB interface, um, connect directly up to a, a five inch wide VGA LCD display module that, uh, that is also available on Avnet, again, should have stock. Uh, on that board as well. Uh, and then the next, once you get aboard, go to our the Linux for SAM uh, page, which is again the main starting point for all Linux related app or Linux related stuff for our micro for my, our microprocessors. Up there, you'll find pre-compiled uh, and maintained SD card images um, again for Yocto, BuildRoot, or OpenWRT. Um, mainline Linux kernel, and you, including the mainline Linux kernel, the U-boot and the 1891 bootstrap um, to actually set up, uh, set up the device, again, based on the, the, the latest, uh, excuse me, the, the most commonly supported Linux build systems. Or there, I mean, you can do that or you can roll your own. There are instructions on there, up there for how to generate your own uh, image, burn that onto an SD card, plug it into the board and get up and running. So this is also the place where you'll find regular posted releases, uh, bug fixes, security patches, um, new uh, new support added, new graphical graphical information added, as well as community fixes and enhancements between um, specific releases to either LTS or or fed back up into uh, into mainline. Uh, and then there's also links to FAQs and forums and other training um, related to our microprocessors. So I'm trying to be a little cognizant of time, so we have time to answer some of these questions. So I give you a little bit of flavor of what's on the, the Linux for Sam site. Hopefully this works. Comes up. So this is our the Linux for Sam site, and as this may be transitioning over to another uh, to another site, but the look and feel will be essentially be the same. So this is. Uh, you can find information on what's what the updates are and what the new features being added into the latest um, our latest Linux image, as well as um, here's the wireless SOM EK. So this is if you click on this, you go to a little bit of information on the board, information on the the actual product, uh, more information on the evaluation kit. But down here, you'll see pre-compiled SD card images. Um, so download one of these, burn it onto an SD card, plug it into the board, um, and you're up and running in just a matter of minutes. So there is both there are both headless um, images as well as um, images that work with the five inch LCD uh, LCD display. And then down here there are there's information as far as how to uh, build your own image from the, uh, from the source available up here. So I think it's pretty specific instructions. See. Also, there are a couple of uh, customer-ready graphical examples that are available on. I believe you, you saw the GitHub site with some of the examples that were available uh, up there as part of the uh, part of the video. Also, that EGT launcher demo that uh, that video was based on. You can download that um, and take a look at that and use that as a, a starting point or, or get some ideas uh, for your next design. But these all work with the. Any of our uh, evaluation kits, including the Wilson evaluation kit, plus the five-inch LCD display. And um, then there's also a more application-specific demo, an EGT, EGT thermostat demo. Again, works on any of our platforms with the display module. Um, this one also supports um, a thermal click board from, uh, uh, for some real-time um, temperature measurements, uh, this thermal click board from uh, Microelectronica, and also has plug and play support for most standard USB cameras. So you can see how the image processing um, would work on the, on the device. So about some of the, the expansion boards um, that are available for these. I mean, you can use our evaluation platforms as the as a springboard for your uh, for your prototype. Um, 
all of our, the, the Wilson board has two of these click bus interfaces. I mean, Microelectronica has, I, I mean, I, I don't know how many they have. I mean, over a thousand, probably way underestimating the number of click boards that they actually have with other components that fit nicely around uh, our processors from wireless connectivity for GPS, um, cellular, six low pan, Zigbee, sub gigahertz, 2.4 gigahertz. I mean, you're gonna find a, a solution there. Plugs directly onto the board. Um, most of them will have a uh, some sort of a, a uh, hopefully mainline Linux driver, uh, but Linux support available at some point. Sensors, um, biometrics, motion sensors, proximity, environmental sensors. Uh, and then there's also microphone inputs I mean, available on one of those as well. So you can actually just plug that onto your board and develop a, a, an audio uh, an audio application. There's also um, through the ISC camera interface, we have a, um, it's not necessarily a, a product, but there is a design available for an interface board that would work with any of the Arduino, Arducam, um, interface boards for uh, uh, for a camera. Um, there's interest in that, uh, uh, shoot me uh, shoot me an email because it's not necessarily a, a, um, a ready-made uh, product at this point. And then we also have the Microchip X Pro expansion boards. That's what these, um, that's what these ports are over here, but that they have various wireless connectivity from VLE, Zigbee, sub gigahertz, um, and LoRa that will plug into these boards as well. So you can use this as a, as a starting point for uh, uh, for your prototypes, and then also on the AI ML front, um, just wanted to let you know that I mean the AI does not necessarily always require a multi-core um, performance. There are lots of pre-trained um, AI inference models that run on lower end microcontrollers as well as uh, as, as microprocessors. They're small pre-trained models that run. Um, uh, that run under Linux, um, including the Python libraries. So, I mean, if you go up to uh, uh, the TensorFlow Lite um, hub, you'll find uh, inference engines that'll run on a microcontroller or microprocessors that for, for pose estimation, speech recognition, um, text classification, and gesture recognition. I mean, as it, it's all running on Linux, I mean, it'll run essentially, essentially the same. It just depends on how many points of, uh, uh, that you need to actually uh, um, that you need to actually look at to make a uh, to make the best uh, best estimate and how long how long that process takes. Uh, if you go up to uh, TensorFlow Light Hub, uh, you can find uh, some examples some examples of this. And then we are also working on a uh, excuse me on a demo that we can make uh, available for uh, for a customer ready demo that actually runs some of these that does some image recognition. It uses um, uses the wireless, would use the wireless SOM and then also some based, some based on some of our next generation processors as well. But it uses either a USB camera interface um, or you can use the ISC camera interface for the image. Um, and then you connect up to a debug console on, uh, on the laptop to actually take a look at that and see how that, uh, and see that how that works as part of that, uh, that demo. So just wrapping up, I just wanted to talk about some of the other um, some of the other evaluation platforms that are similar to this that can also be used for um, for the basis of your next prototype. Uh, the Wired SOM also has an evaluation kit. I mean, it looks pretty similar um, to the Wilsom. Uh, has uh, click interfaces on board, has the RGB parallel interface, SD card slot, still has a camera interface, USB, 10100 Ethernet, based on the same SAM A5 D27 um, 500 megahertz processor, but with one gigabit of integrated DDR2 on this particular board. Um, and then this also works with our five inch LCD display. There's also a um, lower power or actually lower cost um, solution as well. Our SAM 9X60 um, evaluation kit. There is no SOM based on this, but again, we do offer the reference designs um, for the evaluation kits. Um, as well, so you could use this, still use this as an, as a basis of your next prototype. Um, lots of uh, various interfaces you can use. This one only has one click bus, uh, click board interface. One of the differences here is this one also has a 40 pin Raspberry Pi connector, so it could be compatible with uh, lots of uh, various uh, uh, Raspberry Pi hat uh, boards that are uh, that are available in the market. Uh, same ISC camera interface. 
Um, this one's based on a 600 megahertz ARM 926 um, microprocessor with some 2D hardware graphics uh, acceleration. And then we have a another board that has three micro bus, uh, inter, excuse me, micro micro e click bus interfaces in our uh, SAM A5 D2 industrial communications platform. Um, and it has, uh, there's just a ton of interfaces on here. I mean, there's gigabit ethernet on here, 10, 100 ethernet, two 10, 100 ethernet ports, uh, lots of USB ports uh, on board, some user configurable buttons. Um, we bring out six of the six GPIO on this, uh, on this board as well. There's a, a non-populated um, Wi-Fi BOE um, spot on here. So if you want to do um, create a Wi-Fi solution with this, you'd um, purchase a WOP 3000, solder that down on the board. Also has a couple of EtherCAT uh, terminals on board. So lots of things you could do with this particular uh, with this particular board. So application support, again, free factory application support for microchip. We have no pay for play support plans, no web only based uh, support strategy. Not to say we don't have web support. We do have a support ticket system. But once that ticket is generated, you can call into the system and speak to an engineer um, that's been assigned to that case. And for silicon issues, software libraries, product selection, whatever questions you have, you can submit that through that, uh, that system. And then, as I mentioned before, the MPE check design services, that's available to anyone. Uh, it doesn't have to be high volume applications. And the typical turnaround, again, regardless of big or small, um, the typical turnaround has been, at least over the last couple of years, it's still been 24 to 48 hours. Um, so it's pretty quick. Uh, so in summary, uh, microchip, again, we're trying to make microprocessor-based designs as easy as possible. Um, we have long life support, customer-driven obsolescence. We don't EOL microprocessors. Um, we're simplifying the hardware design with the SIPs and the SOMs. Um, and then mainline Linux and LTS support can just make your life a lot, uh, a lot easier, a lot less, uh, a lot less stressful. Um, and also, we do the same thing on the RTOS middleware um, through MP Lab, uh, the MP Lab ecosystem. And then fully integrated uh, hardware, software security, uh, all to get you, uh, I guess, quick time from prototypes all the way up through low volume production, high volume production. Uh, hopefully, with a lot less, uh, a lot less support, a lot fewer headaches. So that is essentially it. And I'm only like three minutes more than I wanted to be. So any awesome. questions, questions did, or answers? You did great. Uh, just a reminder that if you do have questions, um, you can put them in the Q&A section at the bottom of your screen. Neil's been awesome. We've had so many questions coming in a chat and he is just like killing it over there with all of those answers. So I know you've already had a lot of your questions answered, but if you do have questions, there's a Q&A section and then Brian and Neil will answer those questions. Okay. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll run through. We had some pre-submitted questions and we also have quite a few questions coming in live. So I'll start with the ones that are live. So uh, one that's been there and Oleg has been patiently waiting for this is to do with wired, um, wired gigabit ethernet. So Brian, do you want to talk about maybe um, um, some of our accessory solutions and perhaps some of the other things that, that we may have coming in the, in the, sure. In the short term? Sure, yeah, I mean, well, as, as you saw on the, the, the ICP um, evaluation kit, we do have a, there is another microchip. I mentioned we have another division that does um, ethernet products and we do have a gigabit ethernet phi um, and there's a bridge chip that you can use on that. And that's, that is what is available on that ICP platform. Um, so that one does have a wired gigabit ethernet um, solution on that, as well as we are, um, kind of advanced information here, but we are sampling a device today that does have gigabit ethernet. And as I mentioned, we will be introducing SIPs and SOMs based on next generation processors. So that one will have a gigabit, uh, uh, a gigabit ethernet option on board. So that will, that will be a system on module that will have a gigabit ethernet phi um, populated on that, uh, on that module. But that's a, uh, that's like second half of next year uh, timeframe. Yeah, thanks, Brian. And Oleg, I've just added in a link to one of those example bridge devices, and it is fully supported under our 
um, mainline Linux distribution. And as Brian said, you can actually see that on one of our ICP boards. So next question, Brian, um, from McKelly. Uh, I'd like to know if this card could be used to create a simple, simple web server, collects inputs from local remote sensors via Bluetooth, and publish statistics and graphs about the data. So that sounds a bit like our AWS demo, So, yeah. for example. So AWS demo, but there's, there's also, um, we have customers that have implemented that same very thing. Yeah, we actually have a, a team working now um, at one of the one of the local universities that's actually developing a LoRa um, a LoRa gateway and server based on um, based on that our uh, one of our processors as well using the uh, using the SOM. So there's lots of third party um, server solutions that will run on uh, on our processors. Yeah, so definitely, McKelly, that's that's very much possible. And um, one of the the nice things about the statistics graphing stuff, if you want to do it locally, EGT has a lot of those capabilities built into it as well. So you can implement that on the on the localized display as well, or obviously package it up and, and send it to the cloud or another device for offline processing. Um, question from Victor. I'll quickly answer this one. What is EOL? EOL is end of life. So um, in microchip, we are um, dedicated to being a long life provider. So while it's possible to maintain and manufacture a product and there's still customer demand for it, we will endeavor to do our best to do so. And we have 20 plus years now of doing that with our microprocessor products. None of them have been EOL'd. And most crucially, all of them are still supported on the latest version of our mainline Linux. Um, so question for you from uh, Maria Grazia. Uh, Brian, does the board need to be cooled if used continuously in image recognition? Uh, I mean, typically I, that would be up to the, your image. I'm not exactly sure. It depends on what you'd be doing with that and how much performance you actually need to get out of that, whether it is. But I mean, they're typically, our processors, are typically low enough power that don't necessarily require um, a heat sink. I mean, we've had uh, graphical applications um, that have been running on there and you can actually touch, um, you can touch the processor on the board and won't be burning your fingers. So we don't have a, um, there's no slot or there's no um, template on the device to actually uh, put a heat sink uh, if you need one. Yeah, so as, as, to add to that, typically you're going to see from the processor somewhere in the 100 to 150 milliamp uh, running Linux and running uh, running image recognition or running some other relatively high computational load. You have to add in the PMIC, you have to add in the memory. If you're running the wireless at the same time, you have to take all that into consideration. Those are also 25 degree C numbers. But it's very, I don't think I've ever seen a customer in 20 years use a heat sink with our products. Not to say you couldn't be in a thermal environment that would require some cooling of some kind, but we really do focus on low power where you wouldn't need to do that. Good question though. Uh, question from Carlo regarding Python and AI. Um, so you covered a little bit of this, Brian, but you just want to comment specifically on the Python side of it with AI? Yeah, I think most of the most of the the inference, um, the pre-trained inference models actually run, they run on Linux um, via Python. So that would be a, a yes. I mean, you can use. I mean, it, Python would be the recommended solution for running some, at least some of those TensorFlow like, and it runs within a Python environment. Yeah, we have a lot of um, customers that use Python for a variety of functions, whether it be AI, ML or just general scripting using Python as a convenient kind of language. We even provide a, a simple library um, that allows you to bit bang various IO um, lines or, or run simple serial stuff through Python uh, on top of Linux. So yeah, there's full Python support and we've, we've done that with TensorFlow Lite as an example for AI, but we use TensorFlow Lite specifically as an example there are plenty of other open source frameworks. That's the big advantage of, of having mainline Linux support is any of those frameworks will you can take, pick, and drop on our on our processor and they'll work well. Hopefully that answered the question. Another question from Naveen uh, regarding the um, maximum sample rate for ADCs. Um, uh, quick quiz for you here, Brian. Do you remember? <laughs> 
the last time I read through the ADC section of the data sheet, I don't remember exactly what that is. Yeah, I, I would have to refer to the, to the data sheet to find out what yeah. that is. I think it's one mega sample per second, Naveen, and I think it's 12 channels. I know, um, it's, I know it's 12 yeah. bit. Um, uh, 12 bit rather. Um, yeah, 12 bit. I think you're right. Yeah, I think it's 12 bit, one mega sample. Yes, but uh, uh, that's definitely, <laughs> definitely what we're trying to do. So. Okay, um, from uh, Victor, current support for Edge Impulse. Um, maybe I'll answer this one, Brian. Yeah, uh, Edge Impulse. Edge Impulse is a, a microchip partner for MLAI. Um, so we do have support for some Edge Impulse models through um, uh, through our, our Harmony framework, and also um, it's absolutely something that's being targeted in our MPU as well. So yeah, reach out to us directly or reach out to Edge Impulse and we can show you a little bit more about what we have there, if that answers the question. Um, and then um, uh, from Miroslav, are there multi-core versions of this module available, e.g. with multiple Cortex-A5 cores or with additional M0 plus or M23 cores? Um, I don't know if you comment on that, Brian. So yeah, I mean, we have uh, of this one. No, we have roadmap products with multi-core, um, more advanced processors than the, the Cortex A5 on our roadmap, but it's um, they are not something that is available um, that's available today. Yeah, and I'll add as well that one of the great advantages of a SOM and the carrier module, you know, and there was another question about LTE. For example, it's very straightforward to add other uh, microcontrollers or other components next to the module here. Um, one of the things that we, uh, you know, we're a microchip, right? So we have literally thousands of microcontroller devices. So the advantage that we offer by not integrating the M0 Plus or M23 or another Cortex-M alongside the A5 on the same silicon, we're actually allowing you to have the choice of um, picking the right processor for the other functions you need, right? Do you need five volt support for uh, motor control? Do you need uh, functional safety for some particular reason? Do you need something that's doing maybe a little bit more voice processing or DSP processing like a Cortex M7 style solution? Or do you just want a general purpose housekeeping eight, 16, 32 bit uh, M0 plus or PIC or AVR style solution? We have them all. So, uh, and we have a free development environment for it, which is separate from the um, MPU environment, which can make it easier to debug, maintain, and support those, those different things. So we continue to look at integrating Cortex-M or other style cores alongside the Cortex-A, but honestly, um, we tend to find that the development flow is much more challenging and the actual utility of it is much lower to our customers who have prioritized other peripherals instead. Hopefully that answers that question. Um, we have a couple of other questions. Um, I'm not sure if we have time to go through them, Katie. These were the ones that were pre-submitted. Uh, you can uh, pick like one or two. Uh, we got about two more minutes. So if you want to pick one, see if where that gets us okay. for time and then. Uh, I'll do, let me see, uh, AWS compatibility. I'll just say we did cover that. So these the, these songs are uh, pre-certified with AWS. Um, how easy is it to reach the reference design code and the reference design solutions? So uh, maybe that's a good thing, Brian, if you want to yeah, emphasize. Kind of tried to cover that a little, I mean, saw that one beforehand, tried to cover that a little bit, but the um, the reference designs for the SOMs are available from the product page for the SOM, but you will need to actually log in um, and provide your name or, or at, le at least a legitimate email address. So you can get a um, get an email that will have the link to actually go download those. And they're typically Altium um, design files. So you can open those directly up in your design tool. Um, for the eval boards, uh, again, format is the same, but the eval boards, the, um, the design files are available directly on the product page for each of those evaluation boards. And if it's not available, um, they should be. So or if it's not there, they should be. Just shoot, shoot one of us an email. Okay. And one last question from Ujval, um, who made it through and is now entered into the draw for the for the board, uh, is uh, how do you make a product out of these modules? So 
Uh, well, I mean, again, starting place would be one of the evaluation platforms to actually start work, start working with it. But the idea that, I mean, the, the wireless SOM itself is a, um, it's pretty much all in, all encompassing. You need to put it down onto your carrier board that would have all of your other peripheral devices on there. But it, it dramatically simplifies the PCB development for the carrier board. The fact that we have all of the complex routing for the DRAM, we've taken care of all of that, the power management on board. So you just put our wireless, or excuse me, put the, the wireless SOM or the wired SOM down onto your carrier board with 3.3 volts or five volts um, and connect it up to SD card or EMMC, which is relatively straightforward. Um, along with the rest of your board. So it's, it's relatively easy to, uh, uh, to design those in because it's, it's a, again, single-sided solderable PCB down onto your, uh, your uh, carrier board, your PCB. Yeah. And um, to emphasize again, you know, we'll sell the modules as that product. Yes. So once you move from the evaluation board, you, you can move to your own custom carrier board. And if you wish, the link we just showed shows you the full Altium design file. So we have customers maybe that move from buying hundreds or a few thousands of modules, want to buy hundreds of thousands of, of products at that stage, they may want to cost optimize. We give you the full design files to allow you to straightforwardly do that. And of course, the microchip team's there to help you with that too. Right. Awesome. Thank you everyone for joining us. And thanks again, Brian and Neil. Not at all. Thanks so much, everyone, for your Thanks. time. Bye. Bye. Take care.